morning guys, Monday morning, we're back on the scene. We're over Ramsden again today, just carrying on where we left off. Been to PGRs early, uh, got another length for six for two. So we can get this, the last little corner bit and that noggin through the front to pick up the corner of the flat roof. We can get all that round. Sparkies will pop in tomorrow and um, just get the cable in place for the spotlights. We've got two down that side, two on the other side, and then one either side on the front. So yeah, it's gonna look really smart once it's done. We've got the fascia vent. So that goes on top of the fascia, and that provides you ventilation through the front. And then we've either got to put an abutment vent in at the top end, because with airflow, it's got to come in an entry point and an exit point. So we're gonna to have to think about ventilating that. Well, I'll have a chat with the customer whether they want to do a couple of tile vents that might blend in a bit better or we'll do an abutment vent so I'll get some samples, some pictures, show them happy days right get my pouch on pull that sheet off and uh, we'll get cracking Um, that's pretty much us, we're just having a bit of a tidy up. <coughs> Soft fitting faces on. Little, obviously we've just gone to the drawing, so we've got a, a warm deck, and you do get a bit of a big boy fascia on that. So I did make the client aware of it on Friday, showed him the heights of it and stuff like that. Even if we did want to go down the cold roof route, I don't think we'd have got the, uh, the ventilation there. I just don't know if we'd have got the vents in. Because he's got the hollow soffit, he's not going to want the disc vent to put in that, because that's going to look naffo. Can't get any, we've got ventilation either side on the fascia there. Uh, we don't really want the disc vents either on the fascia, because that's going to stand out and look different. So unfortunately, he's going to have to go with a warm dig. So we've got like a 400 fascia on there. I'm gonna bring the fiberglass down a little bit deeper if I can. And then I'll bring the guttering down as well. So try and just tone it down a little bit. But just make sure you make them aware of the size of it. Because if they come home from work and they're not expecting it, again, coming down to client expectations, um, it's not as much of a shock as it would be if you didn't let them know. So pleased with that. Just gonna get the tarpaulin on. Uh, Chris has just done the face events on the top there got the 20 mil vents and that'll do us for the day a few little bits to come in tomorrow we'll do all the trims on the corners stuff like that get the last bit of ply on uh, I'm gonna have a measure up the roof get the meterage pick some materials up I might get some tiles and some fiberglass tomorrow if it's gonna be dry and uh, yeah we'll get that fiberglass roof on Right, so uh, we're finally at Ramsden. It's nearly half ten. We've been on the road since seven o'clock this morning on a wild goose chase trying to find these fiberglass trims 150 mil deep. But we've got it, we're here. I have got a camp in the end. When I picked up a 15 mil plaster ball, which is not your standard board for Western Road, because we've got 600 mil trusses, you need to use the thicker. Uh, plasterboard otherwise you get sagging so been there been to PGRs and I've been to M&J's roofing supplies so I've got tiles soakers lead got all the fiberglass resin matting and all that sort of stuff so we need to get cracking we're chasing the day now right we're just having a little suss out on this roof the flat roof's ready to rock and roll uh, because these tiles sit lower, this needs to go in first and then the roof will come down over the top of it. It's a bit of a strange detail on the side here. 
because uh, it's fiberglass. Fiberglass don't take to lead. Normally you put a lead saddle at the back and you get over it. Because it don't take, I may have to do a lead saddle and then put an additional bit of fiberglass in. But either way, um, I need to tile it first and get the soakers in. So what I've done is I've put the plastic eave tray in. I've battened it up. Now to work out your batten gauge, this works for any tile. So any tile, spin it over, measure the distance from the bottom of the lug to the bottom of the tile. We've got 245 mil. You then put your tape measure 50 mil over the fascia and then mark it at 245. So that works for every single tile. That gives you your first batten and then you'll work out your batten gauge off of that. We've got plain tiles, which is standard 100 mil. And that's that. So both sides are in um, at 100 mil. I marked that top batten, same off that end, 200 and 200 mil. And then I pinged the line through and then that one's gone into that. So this is already rock and roll now. Setting out. I've semi set it out, I've just got some marks where the starting point is. It actually works out full toll there, uh, just by a stroke of luck. But I've... Because it's a bit of a feature now, um, it may not matter, but I've used the centre of that window. So centre of this flat roof, centre of the window, so the centre of the tile. So as the tiles lay in, they'll all be equal and you'll have the same cuts on both sides. So I don't think it'll ever get noticed, but because we're doing a bit of a feature, um, yeah, want to want to make it all uniform and look nice. So I'm going to start getting these tiles in. Chris is loaded out. He's got his grinder ready to go. Let's get to it. Right guys, this afternoon, just been working on this uh, fiberglass roof. We've got the tiles in both sides for the soakers, I'll show you that shortly. Just coming round, putting the trims on for a fiberglass roof. We've got two battens, two drip battens, so we've got a six inch drip so 100 mil down from the top i've put two battens there and what i've done i've glued glued the trims to the battens using the high tack and onto the deck and with uh galvanized cheers mate galvanized clout nails what that does, it just strengthens it up because it's very flexible on that edge, so just strengthens it up. Uh, let me get down here and I'll show you. Show you this detail. So, uh, this front edge, the water normally dives back on itself, so you have to leave it about 65 mil out i've done it 50 mil and as a precaution i've just tacked a roller damp to the battens and i'll lay that into the gutter so if anything does track back it will hit that and run into the gutter there so it looks a bit thingy at the minute but once that gutter's on that'd be sweet and obviously we're trying to line up with this here so if this gutter's under here there's a chance I'm gonna to have to lower it here which means we don't want any fascia on show from far away so that will obviously aid that and also when we're trying to get a liquor top coat on that welt there um, we ain't gonna get it on a fascia so it's an absolute win-win this is a bit of a funny old detail here so I've soaked it up the sides and I've just cut the welt off it and I've used it as a, like a little cover flash in there. Yeah, boy. Shame we started late today. We'd have had this done uh, 
Chris is just is going to make a piss down tomorrow about midday. So what I'm hoping is I'll get these uh, corner bits, get the matting on, get the resin on them today, sheet it up tonight, come in tomorrow, have the rolls ready, and then I can just blitz that out. It'll only take me an hour to throw that on, and then it'll be dry. By 10 o'clock it'll be solido, bone dry, ready for the rain then, and I ain't got to worry about it. I won't top coat it until all the tiling's done. Uh, and just give it a sand down, acetone, top coat it. Morning guys, how we doing? Back to Rams and again, cracking on. I've got to get going this morning because we've got rain due later on today. So I'm keen to get this fiberglass down, give it a chance to cure before the rain. Fiberglass and water does not mix. So I'm gonna get this tower set up, do these corner sections and then get the flat area in. Hopefully I should have that in by 10 o'clock. <coughs> Chris is just coming through, doing the battens on that end, and then uh, we're good to go. Right, it's going well so far. <laughs> Probably should have said that. Apart from the gale force winds, it's causing a bit of an issue. I've just done, knocked up a kilo of gear, resin, and I've just done all the corners. Um, so I'm going to get set up now, knock a bigger one up. Chris has cut all these sections ready to go, so I'm hoping I can get that slapped down in about an hour and then uh, that gives us a chance to dry while we have a cup of coffee. That will be an absolute game changer for me. Managed to get it all on. Phone's ringing again. Before tea time, I'm gonna have a little break now. Been a bit of a manic one this morning. It always is when you're doing resin. You never have enough knocked up to finish the bit that you're doing. So it's just a case of getting it on, get it done. That's now water tight. Um, can pull that felt over it. Right, we're going to crack on uh, battening this roof out. It's plain tiles, which you know are 100mm. What we like to do, which a lot of roofers do, is set them out at 200 so I cut myself a spacer, 160mm. And I basically just drop that on, top of the batten, slide it down, fix it, move it up, slide it down, fix it. And then we start from the top and infill it on the way down, do the 100 mil, just sliding one. Um, that's it.
so strong it's blown my tripod over so there it is have a bit of a clean up on this top roof um, and that's pretty much ready to rock and roll Right, this is a little back yard detail. Uh, it's called a dog's ear or a pig's ear. I haven't got no welding bottles. I did start out as a lead worker, so I know how to do all this stuff, but I sold all my kits. I ain't done nothing for ages. Um, I'll show you where that's going shortly. But we needed to create an upstand. That's going up the pitch of the roof, and that's coming up plumb. So we needed to create this, so rather than cutting and burning it, none of this is going to be seen anyway, so you can just carefully fold it and it create a semi-neat pig's ear, they call that. Right, morning guys. Uh, just over Rams again, we've been to M&J's, picked up hollow soffit and the fascia uh, for this front gable. I'm going to get a measurement. Shout down to Chris, he's going to start cutting the hollow soffit with a jigsaw get all them cut. I'm going to finish off the tiles and the soakers on that abutment, um, get that ready for the render board and then I can get the lead flashing on it as well. We've had a good morning here really, so I'll soak up that side, put the tiles on the abutment. Uh, I've got the two lead flashings on, lead aprons. So we've got a six inch over the tiles. Nice six inch lap. Upstand and then we've got four inch 100 mil going into the, uh, under the window there. So this needs a little detail um gonna have to get some welding bottles and weld a little gusset on there on the both ends a little small piece in the middle bossed it over the edge so that creates my saddle and then the hip will come up and cut nice and tight over there so yeah 10 o'clock also chris has been cracking on with his soffit coming through getting the jade trim all on so we'll have this soffit and fascia on today um, and all the lead ready to rumble. So we may even get into uh, inside tomorrow, start doing a bit of insulation. Yeah, so good.
little shave, a little shavey shave. Always better to have it tight than loose. Remember that? Right, what's happening guys? Uh, we're just packing up for the day. We've had a good day. We've had a good week to be fair. Right, let's try again. The old battery's just died. Yeah, we've had a good day, had a good week. No one's been here today, client-wise, so I'm sure they're gonna be buzzing when they get back. All clean and tidy. Shopping phase is all on, so it's really starting to take shape now. Just before you go, this is what we've been working on this afternoon, so reinstating the battens on the side there with the undercloak. You see the soft hitting face are going on. The lead's all on. And then we've done the same round the side here. All battened down. Right, we are all done. Look at that. Didn't manage to get the render board on this week. But that ain't really no drama, it's two o'clock now, we're gonna have a tidy Friday, have an hour, a tidy up. Well, hopefully less than that half hour. And then uh, I'll show you around the other couple of jobs on the way through, they're both in Villaricky, so I'll pop in and see the tiler. Got to take a video of the coving area to be coved for the decorator. He's gonna go the next Saturday. And then um, I'll pop in the Western Road as well. So yeah, all four, all in action. Squeeze past you there, mate. Right. Right. Just before I go, give you a quick look round. Oh, no. Someone's bibbing me, I think. Yeah. Bathroom, look. I just got to get the aqua panels in there. Bedroom. Kitchen diner's getting skimmed. <laughs> Inside in the shop. <laughs> 